contacts are so dry. So we are practicing product photography today in the studio, but we are actually not in my own studio. We are in my friend Max's studio. She is an incredible product photographer and honestly everything that I know about product photography, which is very little, but so far everything that I know she's taught me. She very generously offered up her studio space today and is allowing me to use her equipment, her props, her backdrops, everything really. She's amazing. Make sure you go check her out and give her some support. The focus for today's session is really just for me to step out of my comfort zone and try out some new ideas. So the few ideas that I have are including water effects, hand shadows, and playing around with moodier different lighting. I feel like so far I've just been sticking to kind of what I know, uh, again, my comfort zone and just doing like really bright, harsh light photography. Today I'm still going to be using harsh light, but I want to play around with some like different kinds of lighting. So here are the inspiration shots that I've put together for my mood board today. I just want to keep it to four images or four ideas to try just to not overwhelm myself. As I always say in every video, it's really easy to just want to try everything, but um, I've learned my lesson and it is just better to really try to execute um, a smaller amount of shots and really make sure that they're like high quality. I'm using a few different products to play around with today. Um, it didn't really matter what I actually chose, but just needed something to be my subject. And so I have a bottle of skincare, I have a couple of colorful bud vases, um, and then I'm gonna put some stems of flowers in them, and then I got a couple of peaches. So I'm gonna walk you through each shot and tell you the behind the scenes, what I did for it, my lighting setup, um, and basically how I executed it. Let's go. So for this shot, I'm using Max's backdrops. They're just pressed wood boards from the hardware store that she painted a custom color. I decided to just keep it simple with just the skincare bottle on a pedestal because the main feature of the shot is going to be the hand shadow. And so I figured it'd probably be not necessary to have any other props. And plus it's the first shot of the day, so I just wanted to keep it simple to warm up. The lights that I'm using here are the Godox 8400 Pro, I think that's the name of it. I will link all the gear that I'm using in the description below so you can check it out there. The way they're set up is actually just the one light on the right side pointing down um, from a high up position. And then I just have a bounce on the left side to bounce light off of it to keep the whole shot well lit. So to get a sharp shadow, um, keep your hand close to the backdrop. Otherwise, the further away your hand is from the backdrop, the fuzzier it is. And another thing to remember is to not obstruct the shadow with your hand, if that makes sense, because you will have to remove your hand in post-production from the shot. For this second shot, I wanted to try out moodier lighting and I figured today would be a great opportunity to do so. I've been wanting to do a backlit shot like this for forever, but I always overcomplicate things and end up just psyching myself out from doing it. But it turns out it's actually pretty simple, obviously with the help of Max explaining it all to me. So the lighting setup for this one is just having the key light off to the left pointing from the back onto the scene. And then I added a fill light to point at the ceiling just to give a little bit more light to the front part of the scene, just because I felt like it was a little bit too dark. So for the wall slash door of this shot, it really is just a piece of board. Um, we just used one of the backdrop boards that she had and you can really just do this with a piece of paper, cardboard, any type of flat surface basically. I really like the setup so I wanted to do a bit more with it so I created a still life where I used some pedestals, the butt bases with the flowers, and I added a couple of sliced peaches and the whole peach um, in this shot and I'm super happy with it. And as a surprise bonus, this type of lighting created a really cool shadow um, from the color bases and this actually would be really cool for a beverage shoot. For this third shot, I wanted to experiment with different lighting again. This was definitely the most complex shot of the day. It definitely took a lot of trial and error to figure out the overall styling of the products and the props and the multiple light sources because there were three light sources in this one and 
but to manipulate them in a couple different ways. Um, I definitely used a lot of Max's knowledge for this one. What she suggested was to have one light down as close to the table surface as possible just because based on the inspo shot that's kind of what it looked like. And then I added a bounce on the other side of the shot just to give the other side a little bit more light and not too much shadow because overall the shot is pretty dark with the darker background and the way the lights are. And with the stream of light in the back, I used um, an off-camera flash, so a speed light, to create that kind of spotlight in the back. But Max suggested that I also wrap some paper or something um, around the speed light just to give the source of light a bit more direction. So the last thing in manipulating the light was the light that was off to the left close to the table surface um, was to just put a board kind of near it and streamline the light a little bit more um, to where you want it to go. And so in this case, it was just to streamline the light a little bit more towards the front of the scene. I'm really happy with how this one turned out and I'll definitely be using the spotlight trick in future shoots. And here's how the shot turned out. For our fourth and final shot of the day, we are doing water effects. So what you'll need for this shot is a wide glass vase, water, luck, and a towel because there is going to be water everywhere. So a couple of things that I learned with doing this shot is number one, you need a high aperture because you want to make sure that everything is in focus. And number two is turning your lens from autofocus to manual focus because you don't want to wait for the autofocus to focus, otherwise you're going to miss your shot. And then the next thing is obviously a high shutter speed because things are going to move fast, so you want to make sure that you can capture it quickly. And then the last thing is setting your shooting mode to high continuous shutter, so then you can do a bunch of burst shots. And so now all you have to do is just drop your product in the water a million times and hope for the best. I'm really proud of this shoot and I feel way more confident with my skills in the studio now. So now that I have a more solid product photography portfolio, I really want to be able to showcase it online and attract the right clients that I want to work with. So a quick and affordable way that I'm doing so is by creating a website on Zyro. They offer a wide range of stunning, ready to use templates that make the process of creating a website easy and fast and it's all customizable in just a few clicks. You can upload your logo, your images, your text to really show off your brand in the best light. And if you need any help along the way, one of Zyro's amazing features is that they offer 24-7 live chat support, so they're there whenever you need them. Give it a try now with Zyro's limited deal using my code Aileen Choi or clicking the link in the description below to get an exclusive discount and three months free and a free domain for a year on any of their yearly plans. So I'm really happy with how this shoot went and it's really inspired me to get back into the studio soon and try out new things because in reality, I think a lot of it was quite simple, but I just overcomplicated them in my head. And this whole process has taught me that it's okay to try new things and not be good at them right away, which is a totally new concept for me. But I'm excited to get back in the studio to shoot some more and I will definitely be documenting that and sharing it here with all of you. Of course, it helped a ton having somebody there who knew what they were doing to guide me and help me and answer any of my questions. So thank you again, Max, wow. not only for that, but for sharing all of your equipment and tools for my shoot today. I would also like to thank again Zyro for sponsoring this video. Make sure you use my code Aileen Choi if you want to take advantage of their exclusive offer. And lastly, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you like this format of the video where I am sitting down talking to the camera and mixed with some of the documentation of the shoot itself. Or if you prefer the other format where it's kind of more like vlog style and I just shoot everything kind of as I go. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this Okay, that is it for me today. Finally. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye